Welcome back. The objectives of this video is to identify the x-intercepts of a quadratic. We're going to write a quadratic equation given the vertex and a point on the parabola, and we're going to find the maximum or minimum value of a quadratic. So our first objective here is identifying the x-intercepts. And our x-intercepts are going to occur when our parabola crosses the x-axis. Well, we don't know what the x value is, but we should know what y is. We should know that the x-intercepts occur when y is equal to 0, right? They're going to occur somewhere on the x-axis. So we know our y value, or our output, is 0. So our process, we can do this by factoring. We can square root both sides if our b value in standard form is 0. We can complete the square, or we can use the quadratic formula. Those are all ways to find the x-intercepts. Hopefully, most often, we'll just be able to factor. So um, let's take a look at our first sample problem. They're asking us to describe the graph of f of x equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 8 and identify any x-intercepts. So we're going to start off by writing this in vertex form. So f of x equals, let's go ahead and we're going to have to complete the square here, okay? So let's factor out our negative 1 out of the first two terms, and we get x squared minus 6x plus blank, and then our minus 8. So when we complete the square, we're going to take half of 6, Right, 6 over 2, that's actually negative 6 over 2, and we are going to square it. So that is a negative 3 squared. So we've completed the square, but we've manufactured over here on the on this side, we've manufactured negative 3 squared, or we've manufactured 9. But really, since we're taking the opposite of all this, we have actually manufactured negative 9. So in order to offset that negative 9, we have to add 9. So let's take a look. What's this going to look like? This is going to look like x minus 3 quantity squared minus 8 and then plus 9 because we have to offset the negative 9 that we created. We simplify and we get the opposite of x minus 3 quantity squared plus 1. So we should know some things about our parabola, our vertex here using our h and k is at 3, 1. We should know because our a value is negative, we've got a reflection and this is going to open down. So we might as well put our vertex in at 3, 1 and make a note here that this is going to open down. So we're going to have real x-intercepts. This thing is going to cross the x-axis. So now we want to calculate the x-intercepts in step two. Okay, We know that our y value has to be 0, so we can set f of x. This becomes 0. So we have 0 equals negative x squared plus 6x minus 8. Factor out the negative 1. So we factor that out, and then we have the opposite of all of this quantity. We're going to factor, and this, this factors nicely to x minus 4 and x minus 2, and then we solve for x, and we know that x can be 4 and x can be 2. So our x-intercepts are at the points 4, 0 and 2, 0. So we go ahead and plot those points, and our parabola looks something like that. Objective two, we want to write an equation in vertex form of a parabola whose vertex is 1, 2, 
and passes through the point 3, negative 6. Well, if our vertex is at 1, 2, we have our h and k, don't we? Okay, we've got our h and k of vertex form. So we know right away here that we have f of x equals a times x minus 1 quantity squared plus 2. So that's from our vertex of 1 and 2. Now we know f of x is y. Okay, what we have left now is to find the a value. Okay, well we have an x and y. We've got our h and k. The only thing that's missing is a. So our x is 3, our y is negative 6, so we'll substitute that in. And we get negative 6 equals a times 3 minus 1 squared plus 2. So negative 6 equals a times 3 minus 1 is 2 squared is 4. So it's a times 4 plus 2. We'd probably never write it that way. We'll write that negative 6 equals 4a plus 2. We subtract 2 from both sides. We get negative 8 equals 4a. And we see that a equals negative 2. So our function in vertex form equals negative 2 times x minus 1 quantity squared plus 2. The next thing we're going to do is find the maximum or minimum value of our quadratic. And the maximum or minimum is going to occur at the vertex. If you think about that, that totally makes sense. Okay, the maximum or the, the top will occur at a parabola that opens down, and the minimum will occur when a parabola opens up. Okay, so parabola that opens down, a is our a value is going to be negative, our a value will be positive on a parabola that opens up, so that one will have a minimum. Okay? And the maximum or minimum value occurs at the y coordinate of the vertex. Okay? So in vertex form, it's actually quite easy. The maximum or minimum value will be the k value of our h and k. This will be either our max or our min. Okay? In standard form, it's a little bit tougher. So given a function in standard form, the opposite of b over 2a gives us the x-coordinate of the vertex. It's also the axis of symmetry. So if we have a parabola, we know a parabola is symmetrical, okay, and that axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So it's going to be x equals something. Well that we get by doing the opposite of b over 2a. In order to find the y value, what we need to do is put our x value into the function and calculate it. Okay? And since the y value is the max or min of the parabola, we need to do that. So if we find the x coordinate by doing the opposite of b over 2a, this is just a fancy way of saying my y coordinate is inputting the opposite of b over 2a into the function. So what does this look like in a real sample? Well, let's take a look. If we want to calculate the maximum min value of our function, okay, we're in standard form here. We could put it in vertex form, but I think it's going to be probably a little bit easier just to do the opposite of b over 2a. So our a value is 2 our b value is 8, our c value is 7, the opposite of b over 2a is equal to negative 8 over 4 or negative 2. So we know that's the x-coordinate of our vertex. So our vertex is going to be at negative 2 something and this will be our, actually this is going to be the minimum. Okay, because our a value is positive, this parabola is going to open up. 
So all we have to do is find f of negative 2. I've got that started down here. So find f of negative 2, and we get 2 times negative 2 squared plus 8 times negative 2 plus 7. Uh, so we get 2 times 4 minus 16 plus 7, and we get negative 1. So negative 2, negative 1 is our vertex, so the minimum value is negative 1. And finally, we're going to do an application problem. Okay, uh, Aaron Rodgers throws a Hail Mary pass at a point six feet above the ground at a velocity of 60 feet per second at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the ground. The path of the football is given by the quadratic function f of x equals negative 0.0168 x squared plus x plus 6, where f of x is the height of the football, that's our height in feet, and x is the horizontal distance from Aaron Rodgers in feet, so that would be how far down the field he threw the ball. How high does Aaron Rodgers throw the football? So we're going to use our graphing calculator for this. So I'm going to take a moment here. I'm going to pull up the graphing calculator. And I'm going to put in my function. Be careful with the negative sign. Make sure you use the, the one in parentheses here on your keyboard. And we input the function. Now, I did have to spend a little time thinking about the, the window. Okay, And I thought, well, the, the x value is how far down the field in feet, so I did 150 feet, which is like 30 yards, it's not real far. And my height, I did 100 feet, oh that would be 50 yards. And then my height, I did about 30 yards or 100 feet. And I thought, oh, we'll tweak the scale here a little bit and see what we get. Okay, so I graphed my function and that's what I got. Um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to I'm going to tweak my window a little bit because you can see I don't have to go that far. So each of these were five. So my y values and x values I don't need nearly as many. So I'll go back. My x values I can decrease that to about fifty. And my y values, I can also decrease that by quite a bit, but I'll just go to 50 for that as well. Okay? So there you get a better look at that function. So my maximum is going to occur somewhere in here. So I'm going to go ahead and tweak my window again. My x I made too small. We'll go to 75. So you too may you know, have to tweak your window a little bit to get a, a graph that looks pretty good. So we want to find our maximum or minimum. In order to do that, we can just go to second calc, and we want to find the maximum for. Okay, It's asking for a left bound. It says I, I want to know how far left I should be. So we need to set a boundary to the left of that. I was on the right side, so that might be a left bound. Say, hey, calculator, I don't need to look any further left than this. Hit Enter. Now it's asking for a right bound. How far right should I look? So we'll cursor over and to the other side of what our appeared maximum is. We can see here that uh, you know, we're using the trace button, we can get pretty darn close. But let's go ahead and do our right bound, enter. It's asking this to hazard a guest. I'm not going to do that. And my maximum occurs at about y equals 20.89 and our x value. So given that function, we got about 20.89 for our Y. So good for Aaron Rodgers. So we have 
uh, found the maximum or minimum of a quadratic, uh, and we found the x-intercepts as well. So we've met our objectives for today, and we can work on this when I see you in class.